in order to achieve anything dancing concerned, we have to get our body into an almost perfect position. Now that's quite difficult as our spine is double S shaped. Now we have to find a position where the skeleton is taking care of our stability and of our balance with minimum muscular effort involved. In order to achieve that, we have to make a few corrections to our daily stance. Now we try to show you that, and you watch it, William, from the side in a relaxed position. Now we have two things to correct. First of all, the thoracic spine. If we find the spot round about where a bra lock would be, that piece should be slightly in and up. Now this part of the thoracic spine carries the neck and the head. The second part to be improved has to be the position of the pelvis. Now we get a relaxation of the legs so the buttocks are hanging onto the toes. Now the lumbar spine sinks downwards and stretches the lower part of the spine. Now automatically all the muscles are more relaxed than before. They are not in extra use. We try to do that again, both pieces. We stretch the thoracic spine, we sink the sacral bone at the end of the pelvis, and now automatically the muscles are relaxed. We need to have relaxed muscles. A muscle can only be used once at a time. So if we would need the muscles to hold up our body, they are not useful for us for any kind of movement, like rotations, sways, or any other kind of action. Main stability comes from skeleton, as I said before. And very important for that is the position of the thigh bone of the standing leg. The thigh bones has to be as vertical as possible because they guarantee stability. In order to secure the correct pelvis position, there is a muscular chain helping us. The muscular chain starts in the big toe. It goes through the sole of the foot, runs through the calves, through the hollow of the knee, and ends on the inside of the thigh, right here. This is activated through pressure of the big toe into the floor. So if the big toe presses to the floor, automatically that muscular chain helps us to secure the pelvis position. We will come later when we speak about lowering and rising about how much we can use this muscular chain. The second thing I have to adjust, this was one of Bill's favorite grips. He combined the position of the pelvis to the position of the stomach. So he was grabbing actually to the buttock and to the stomach and was putting these two pieces in one line. So that goes slightly in and up that goes slightly forward. So that is a lined up body. As the head is the heaviest part of the body, it plays a, a vital role in the balance. To adjust to the correct head position, Bill had a very special grip. He used his thumbs under the skull from the back side. The middle fingers were under the cheekbones and he could adjust the head slightly to take all the pressure out of the neck muscles, just like a seal is balancing a ball on the nose. Now the cheekbones are slightly ahead of the toes, and that gives a perfect balance with a totally relaxed muscular frame. So if we look at William's posture from the front, you will realize that there is one line starting from the big toe it goes up the inside of the leg through the groin and like braces up here to the collarbone. So whenever you hear shoulder, hip and foot, can't be. The shoulders are wider than the hips, the hips are wider than the feet. So big toe, groin and collarbone is the perfect balance line. Another great idea of Bill was to have the imagination that you feel you have a third eye on your forehead. Now that third eye is being used as a spotlight going onto the same level into the audience. It helps your balance, it helps your posture, and it helps your presentation.
to line up the spine in the correct way, he had another great exercise, which Alessandra will demonstrate for us. Bending forward, letting the top completely hang down, inclusive the head weight. It stretches the spine. Now from the lowest vertebra on, she starts to erect the body until the last point, the head, is in completion of a perfect vertical line. Now that exercise everybody can do for himself. Now to reach a perfect lady's position, she stands first exactly the same as a man, transfers her weight into the left foot, and now from here, she relaxes the left leg and the left buttock onto the left big toe. Now what you see now is there's a line from the neck into the left heel. And there is a line also from the front part of the pelvis into the left big toe. So the beautiful curve of the lady's line comes from relaxing and not from stretching up and away from her feet. Her body weight is now hanging into the floor and the connection to the feet is now the maximum.